by elections in 26 states. INEC, the electorate and other stakeholders get set this Saturday as preparatory activities heighten for credible polls. Governor Caleb Muftang of uh, Plateau State heads the Governorship Screening, co screening Community co Committee, I beg your pardon, for Edo State People's Democratic Party and clears all 10 aspirants, says the party is ready for a credible conduct. Just as former Minister of State Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, an APC member in the Edo Guba race, so Miss interest of expression form. Governor Amadou Fintri of Adamawa State is uh, now at home. Uh, uh, you know, happy and smiling as the Supreme Court affirmed this election. These and more on political update today. Uh, I'm Fisayo Gufui. Join us for details. The electorate in some constituencies in the 26 states in 26 states will vote in by-elections later for this Saturday, 3rd of February, 2024. Here's a report uh, from the affected states uh, on the level of preparations for the exercise. From Yenagua by Elsa State, INEC says election will be conducted in seven polling units in Yenagua constituency too as sensitive and non-sensitive materials have been dispatched. 2,828 registered voters are expected to vote during the by-election. Our voter education team also went to, the polling, uh, to those locations of the polling units to sensitize people there so that they will come out and vote. Meanwhile, political parties that will participate in the by-election in two constituencies of Delta State signed peace accord to adhere to rules and regulations of the election. Only those with permanent protest card, if you don't have your PBC, then you have no business being there. Bibas will be used before voting and results will be uploaded to INEC result via the IRF portal. Similarly, all is set for the by-election in Ikare as political parties are busy on the field highlighting what they have to offer to electorate as INEC distributes election materials. All registered voters in this federal constituency should turn out in mass. They should be rest assured that their votes will count. Whatever vote that is cast that day will not be lost. In KB State, election will be conducted in two federal constituencies and materials for the exercise have been distributed. Just witness the distribution of sensitive materials for Ari the Ariwa and Dendi rerun elections and uh, by election in Yauli, Ingeski and Changa. Electorate in some constituencies in Bauchi State will also vote in the forthcoming by elections. Because everybody is going to spend the night there, we are going to have a refresher training uh, that night for the election officials. And so, as early as 6 o'clock, these materials and our ad hoc staff are going to move to the various polling units for the election to start by 8.30. There is going to be serious deployments of personnel. Meanwhile, key players have been urged to proactively play their respective roles towards uh, credible buy and rerun elections later to hold in 26 states across the country. Ellen, this morning, our guests on our program group on Nigeria applauded our next preparation so far, uh, reiterating the need for mobilization of eligible voters to cast their ballot. The election from our experience in previous elections if there's one thing we're learning is that um INEC needs to invest in its communication um especially as it begins deployment so if there are locations where there are challenges on elections day it's also important to communicate timely as long as politicians will just see election days as the most important days where they will bring in cash and win the elections we will continue to lack in democratic dividends will continue to be deficient in good governance let's not run a democracy without democrats you know let us be a democracy in which we have democrats leading the process and uh, doing everything it takes to ensure that the broader interest of society the broader interest of the community prevails election is a most stakeholder affairs. INEC is not a security outfit. INEC doesn't have the logistics. That's the vehicles to convey people, uh, the men and material to polling units on election day. So we need to collaborate with all of these people in order to achieve 
the purpose. All right, to further this discussion, uh, political analyst Emmanuel Unjoku is also the Director of Democracy and Governance for Connected Development, a civil society group, of course, uh, which monitors the election with keen interest, joins us in our studio. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Emmanuel. Thank you for having me. You've had conversations across the country from uh, uh, some of the reports we've done, especially monitoring the uh, activities of the election management body, that's the Independent National Electoral Commission, as far as this by-election is concerned. In terms of the level of preparedness of INEC and the electorate, uh, as well as security agencies and others uh, in the scheduled election tomorrow, what are the kind of uh, feedbacks you're getting from your men uh, in the field? Well, um, well um, like I always say, I do not doubt the capacity of INEC to uh, be able to deliver in this election. And just to put it in, put it in context, it's good to note that this election is going to happen in about 8,936 polling units. So you remember that in 2023 election, the general election, elections was conducted in 176,000 polling units. And INEC was, yeah, almost in all of these polling units. So we're talking about just about 5% of that number of polling units we had in the general election. And just to also put it in context, that the number of um, registered voters with their PVCs who are expected to participate in this election is about 4.6 million registered voters. And you remember that in the general election, uh, around our voter register is about 94 million registered voters with about 89 million expected to vote in the general election. So with just about 4.6 million registered voters, that again is about 5% of the total number of registered voters that INEC was able to manage in the 2020 general elections. So with this, bearing this in mind, uh, I am very confident that INEC and their preparations, that they will be ready to conduct this election. The usual, the challenge I see in this election is our usual culprits, which is the politicians who um, in every but, election. But before I let you go to that part, okay. we'll uh, have time to look at you know, some of these characters as well. Okay. But uh, what are the key issues uh, you, we should look out for to determine if the electoral body is really pre prepared for a credible call. Well, I mean, like the two, like like we are like getting the um, feedback from the field that um, election material, sensitive materials and non sensitive are being are being distributed. The usual challenge is those far to reach areas, which some of the polling units where these elections will be happening will be those far to reach areas with the issues surrounding issues of insecurity in some of these places. But again, we we'll talk election is not only about INEC. You know, it's all about the stakeholders. And so if the security agencies, like they've pledged and they've committed, if they do their part and INEC distribute timely, like I said, it's just about 5% of the polling units. If they distribute timely with the existing partnership with uh, uh, transport, uh, transporters in these local communities, I do not see any challenge. I mean, unless we are now uh, placing INEC so lowly not to be able to deliver an election in just about 8,900 polling units. All right, in terms of numbers, that is everybody have always had, you know, uh, at least uh, very, uh, let's say, at least manageable ele elections, elections that don't uh, throw up too many controversies, especially when they're off cycle or rerun like this, in terms of because of uh, the deployment of enough men and materials and all that. But uh, uh, the usual characters, of course, uh, will come to play. Uh, that is not going to where you were going to earlier. Uh, when you, did your, you know, we have a competition right now at the calf, uh, calf, uh, AFCON uh, going on. Uh, if you put in the kind of characters we have uh, sometimes in the political space, there is always an opportunity to shift the goalposts around the corner <laughs> when it's getting towards, you know, uh, the, the crucial point. So how do we, for instance, de de incentivize, uh, you know, some of the tactics if, you know, some political actors have uh, come to uh, it's become a bad habit, especially when it comes to election eve. So, like I, I had uh, in your report, uh, Mrs. Mary, um, I think the director from INEC uh, in your early morning show, like I watched her speak. Yeah, INEC, the INEC's own is to set the rules and then, you know, be available on the, the day of the election by 8.30 there and be prepared for people to vote, cast their votes. But then again, the biggest challenge, like you rightly pointed, is some or others, most of our politicians who do not want to go by the rules because they always want to find a way to be able to cut corners. And if you look at it, this thing critically and closely, most of the issues why we're even back in this same um, to do election in, in some of these um, constituencies uh, were mostly uh, elections that, were, that was overturned. By the, by, by, by the Supreme Court and Appeal Courts. 
simply because these same politicians didn't follow the rule or simply because some of the INEC staff on ground went ahead to make declarations even when clearly the declarations they were making was against the rules of the game. And I say this because there are places where you see declarations and returns were made even when the margin of lead was not met. It's clear that the election didn't happen in some of these polling units. Like I know in Econo in the federal constituency, based on the judgment that was given in the paper, the election didn't hold in 33 polling units. And the margin of lead at the time when return was made was less than the number of people registered with PVCs in those 33 polling units. So the usual corporates will always go in their usual way to want to thwart the process so that they can manipulate the process and win. Again, it is the duty of our political, uh, our security agencies. And I, I, in as much as they've shown a lot of commitment, our security agencies must, you know, see this in as a call to duty of patriotism and not an opportunity to make money from political actors. So they are the ones that will be able to protect the process to see that that the political parties and the part, uh, politicians play by the rule. All right, let's look at, uh, uh, you know, the last elections that we've had. We had the general elections earlier in the year, and we had the off-cycle elections in three states mm -hmm. uh, in November. Uh, did you notice any good practice that we could bring forward from those off-cycle elections uh, to perhaps, uh, you know, shave off some of our concerns? Of course, I was in, I was in Kogi State in that uh, off-cycle election Kogi Bayasa and Imo State, I was in Kogi, Kogi, Kogi State. And you remember, before the election in Kogi State, there was so much ado about the insecurity and the violence that was anticipated in that election. But you remember, there was no violence. And there was very minimal violence in the election. It, it wasn't a miracle. It was simply because the security agencies deployed adequately and they were very available. And for that reason, the miscreants who constitute nuisance and cause trouble in elections they didn't have the, the grounds for their free play to. To, for their madness. So that's why I keep saying this. Our elections can never be peaceful if our security agencies do not stand up to their role to protect this process. It is their duty to do so. So as we go into these elections tomorrow, it is still their duty to protect this process and see that everybody plays by the rules. All right, uh, let's move on to some, uh, some other stories uh, making the rounds before we come to close shop. Uh, Governor Caleb Mufang of uh, Plateau State led uh, the People's uh, Democratic Party Governorship Screening Committee for Edo State and has cleared all 10 aspirants who appeared uh, before uh, the committee. Uh, the governor assured them that the party is of the party's readiness to conduct free, fair, and transparent primary election. 11 aspirants purchased the expression of interest form for the September governorship election in Edo State. Ten of them went ahead to purchase the nomination forms, qualifying them to face the party screening committee, headed by Governor Caleb Mufwang of Plateau State. The Edo State Deputy Governor, Philip Shaibu, flanked by other aspirants, commended the PDP National Working Committee and the screening committee for a transparent process as they all agreed to work together in the interest of the party. I want to also pledge that uh, we will abide by all rules as far as it's transparent. And by the grace of God, we, we are PDP and we are PDP. We are preaching, let us start to build the party, true faithful party members. If you don't have party members, you will never build the party. Eight out of the ten aspirants were on hand to receive their clearance certificates from the PDP National Organizing Secretary, Umar Patuwe. Meanwhile, former Minister of State Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, says his agenda for Edo State is people-oriented and will trigger the much-needed transformation in the habits of the nation. The governorship aspirant was speaking on a wide range of issues soon after submission of his expression of interest and nomination forms to run for the governorship race of the state. What I'm bringing to Edo, to the table, is what I call the trust initiative. Some people call it the trust uh, agenda. But whatever you want to call it, we want to transform our rural and urban spaces together. That's what trust means to me. He aspirant says his background and antecedents in politics and administration have prepared him for the job, hoping to build on the successes of uh, former governor Adam Sushemale if elected. That's what we'll be coming with, engaging the people to know 
their pain points. Yes, they need road, they need water, they need light. But which one do they need the most? He appealed to Edo voters to rally around APC for purposeful and transformative leadership, which uh, he says uh, the party stands for. All right, let's uh, move to the next state, which is uh, Ondo State. Olaide Adelami has been sworn in as the seventh deputy governor of Ondo State by the chief judge of the state justice, Olusha Gudushala. The occasion marks a significant milestone in the political history of the state. The deputy governor, accompanied by family members and political associates, took the oath of office pledging allegiance to the state and vowing to diligently serve the people. I, Dr. Olaide Oladi Adelaide, do solemnly swear. The governor in his address expressed unwavering confidence in the newly sworn in deputy governor emphasizing their shared vision for the development of the state. It is our expectation that you will provide fresh ideas and new drive to support this administration, yes, consolidating our legacy projects, building a sustainable social economic base as encapsulated in our redeemed agenda. I hereby I will not be upset to be your deputy, and my loyalty to you will be total. As the state embarks on a new chapter with the inauguration of its deputy governor, the hopes and aspirations of its citizens are ignited, paving the way for a promising future filled with progress and inclusive development. The story from the legislature. Now, 40 bills are currently at various stages of uh, consideration in the House of Representatives towards the alteration of the Constitution. Deputy Speaker of the House and Chairman House Committee on Constitution Review, Benjamin Kalu, stated this at a pre-inaugural meeting to draft a work plan. The House Committee on Constitution Review is already drafting a work plan and engaging experts in the quest to revisit provisions of the Constitution that border on the security and welfare of citizens. The committee is fully aware of the concerns of Nigerians on the need to finalize and conclude discussions around Nigeria's Constitution. In the last Constitution Review, there were some key constitution amendment proposals that did not pass either because we did not fully understand their provisions an example was the proposal to create additional seat for women in federal and state legislative houses let us use this opportunity to understand this proposal hoping that those who are the promoters of this particular amendment will Start the uh, advocacy timely. For the home run, we've seen, uh, you know, the different uh, masquerades coming out in different parties getting ready for uh, the uh, government house in Edo State. Of course, uh, about three weeks after that, Edo State was also uh, take center stage. But uh, if I were to ask you, Manuel Njoku, we are seeing uh, the by elections as a result of some of uh, the processes from pre and um, during elections that did not work out. And then, of course, after uh, post election adjudications have led to uh, some of these, uh, you know. Uh, elections been done again. We've started again this time. Uh, what do you think, you know, we should be doing for first from the party level to make sure that uh, this new cycle of election and then post-election education, eventually you get, you know, affirmation from the courts is lessened? <laughs> well, I hope uh, that the political parties, parties will learn lessons from what has happened and with the court processes that just got concluded recently. But like I said earlier, our challenge most of this time is with political parties. And I say this, uh, some of my colleagues at the IPAC may not like this, but IPAC, as uh, uh, more like all the political parties put together, had an election recently, if you are aware. And that election of just about 16 or 19, 16 persons or 19 persons, they're in court, as we speak, for just an election as small as that. So I hope with all the persons coming up to... Uh, participate in the primaries, election primaries in Edo State. I hope that the, 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 the party uh, machinery will do the right thing 
so that when they eventually present a candidate, people will know that this is who the candidate is. Like we saw in the last election, some candidates, as at a week or two weeks before the general election, citizens still didn't know who the candidates of some of the political parties were because of all the court cases. So I'm hoping that the political parties will do the right thing and follow their rules, their own rules, so that they will throw up candidates who they will not substitute or who the uh, court will not eventually sack at the end of the elections. Imaral Njoku of Connected Development, thank you very much for being a part of uh, today's program. You've been able to connect the dots as far as uh, what we need to m get uh, a very credible process uh, is concerned. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you for watching our program as thank well you. at home for uh, this week. That concludes uh, Political Update for this week. We'll be back again on Tuesday. Between now and then, play your politics for the greater good and keep it locked on the Nigerian Television Authority for news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Bye-bye now.